Hey everyone, welcome to my shop. Thanks for joining me for another patron Q&A where I answer questions submitted by our Patreon supporters. Now if you'd like to support our efforts and have your questions answered right here on the channel, please consider joining our Patreon community. We'll have more information on how you can go about doing so at the end of the video. Right now though, let's get into today's questions. So today's first question comes from Hugo. He wants to see a demonstration of the frame saw. Um, now in the last, last month's Q&A, uh, you saw me saw a veneer with a standard rip saw. The frame saw is essentially just a beefed up version of the standard rip saw um, for sawing wider stock really. Um, so that's what I want to give you a, a quick demonstration of today. I'm not going to go through everything about this saw. I did do a whole video dedicated to this saw several years ago and I'll put a link to that uh, in the uh, down below in the uh, video description here so that you can go back and watch that original video that I did on this frame saw. But I will talk about this briefly. So the first thing that I want you to notice is how much different, how much bigger the teeth are on this saw than they are on, on the frame saw than they are on the standard rip saw. And they're not that far apart in actual teeth per inch. My rip saw is about five, I think it's five and a half points per inch. Um, this frame saw I think is about three and a third points per inch. Um, so if you think about it in terms of points per inch, it's not really that different. It's only about, you know, about two points per inch. But when you actually look at the size of the teeth on the frame saw compared to the size of the teeth on the standard rip saw, um, you'll see there's a very distinct difference between the two. And that's what allows this frame saw to cut so much faster. So let me do a brief demonstration of that um, and show you exactly how much faster the uh, the frame saw can cut. So this is um, this is a piece I've already started cutting in and what I'm going to do is let's let's try it this way. I'm going to set a little timer and I'm going to cut for 30 seconds. I won't show you the whole 30 seconds. Uh, I'll, I'll cut away and come back. But what I want to do is saw for 30 seconds and see just how um, just how much difference there is between the two. So let me set this timer for 30 seconds. We're going to put a little mark here. If I put this saw straight across, that mark right there is about where the saw started. I'm going to start ripping this board. So let's look at this now. In 30 seconds of sawing, I've managed to go down roughly an inch. So from our starting point to where we finished is roughly an inch tiny bit more than an inch. Now this is a, this board's about nine and an eighth inches wide. So that'll give you some idea. 30 seconds I've, I've sawn about an inch. So to take this board, which is roughly about three feet long, 30 seconds I've gone an inch. So to go uh, 36 inches, I would need to saw for about 18 minutes. Let's try the frame saw. As I mentioned, the frame saw has about three and a third teeth per inch. So it's about two teeth per inch difference, but they're still significantly different in size, even though in count, they're not a whole lot different. So there's a couple things that this saw has an advantage over the standard rip saw. The first is weight. 
Um, this saw weighs a whole lot more. So the downward force, the downward weight of this saw alone is going to help to drive it through the cut faster. Um, in addition to the larger teeth, the longer blade. This blade's about 48 inches long. It's about two inches wide. Uh, and I mentioned three and a third teeth per inch. Both saws are sharp. So let's give this one 30 seconds and see where we end up. Okay, so now you can see, here was our first one. We were roughly about an inch in 30 seconds. With our frame saw, we're about two and three quarters of an inch, roughly, in 30 seconds. Okay, so two and three quarters of an inch in about 30 seconds versus about an inch in 30 seconds. So this saw was almost three times faster than the five uh, the five and a half point saw, even though it's only about two, uh, two, two fewer points per inch. So, but there's a lot more going for it, right? I think I mentioned earlier, it's got a four foot blade as opposed to a two foot blade. It's got three and a third points per inch as opposed to five and a half points per inch. Uh, it has a, only a two inch blade in, in height, so we're not dragging as much blade through the cut. And this saw is heavier, so the, the weight of this saw is going to want to sink it down faster than the weight of the regular five point uh, rip saw. So um, while I don't use this for everything, because it's, it can be a little bit challenging to use by yourself, um, even with a second good sawyer, it can still be a little bit challenging to use the standard rip saw is going to be much easier to saw straight with. This takes quite a bit of practice. Um, but at the same time, if I have a lot of resawing to do, um, this is the saw I tend to turn to because it can just do the job so much faster. Uh, again, this was this piece of spruce was about nine and a quarter inches wide. Um, anything about seven inches or less, and I'm just using a standard handsaw. Once I get up to eight inches or more, um, that's when I really start to think about using a saw like this. So our next question comes from Jay. Jay says, I'm building countertop out of one and a half inch thick walnut and the final dimension being 26 by 52, consisting of six inch wide boards glued together. Interested to see how you would create a flat, square, and smooth surface for the end grain of the countertop. On the split top rubo workbench I just made, I cut the ends of each of the yellow pine panels with a crosscut saw, then used a sharp number five to smooth the end grain, checking for square and flat often as I worked. It took a while, and I sharpened my plane blade several times through the process. The result wasn't as flat and smooth as I hoped for, and I was wondering if there was another approach I should take to get a better result on the walnut. Would it be possible to show your process for planing thick end grain hardwood, flat and square? Okay, so a couple things here uh, about your Rubo workbench and about the, the, the top of your countertop. So what I've got here is just a piece of one and a half inch thick walnut. Uh, it's roughly 10 inches wide. Um, and we're gonna use this as our example, as our, as our makeshift countertop here. But there's a few things that I wanna point out before we get to actually um, taking care, taking, taking something off the end of this board and showing how we, we take care of that. Uh, number one, in my world, maybe you feel different about this, but in my world, something like the end of a Rubo workbench, the end of a countertop does not need to be flat or square. It only needs to look flat and square. So, in most cases, I am not going to take a straight edge and put it up to the edge of countertop. I'm not going to take a square and put it up to the edge of that countertop. I think if you were to do that, in most cases, even with a factory-made countertop, you see my, my Rubo bench here, it's pretty square. Mm, not perfectly flat. There's a little hollow in the middle of that end. My point being, 
I think even if you look at a factory made countertop, you're going to find that the ends um, and possibly even in some cases the faces are not 100% perfectly flat, uh, straight and perfectly square. So I think trying to chase perfection in an area where it doesn't need to be perfect is a recipe for frustration. But that's just my opinion. Um, if you want to go that route, that is completely up to you. What I'm going to do is take this board and I'm going to cut it and plane it so that it looks good. Not so much so that it's perfectly straight or perfectly square. Because again, no one is going to put a square on the edge of that countertop or put a straight edge on the edge of that countertop and look to see if you're a couple thousands out of perfectly straight or if you're you know a couple thousands out of square. If it ain't perfectly square and it ain't perfectly straight, as long as it looks straight and square, I think you're good to go. So here's how I would take that countertop and get to the point where it looks good, looks straight and square. So here's our countertop, here's our crosscut saw. So I'm gonna take a square and a knife And I'm going to mark myself a cut line. And I'm going to mark myself a cut line down this edge. And I'm going to mark myself a cut line down this edge. Now in this case, I'm not going to bother squaring across the bottom. You could. Um, you could put this up here. My workbench is in the way, so I'm not going to bother. Um, if you're really that concerned about it, you could go ahead and uh, and cut a, put, scribe a line across that side too. Now, I'm going to step in front of you for a second. So now I'm going to saw this off. Now I'm going to do my best here to stay as close to my line as I can. Now, you can imagine if this was two boards, if this was multiple boards glued together in a wide countertop, you might have a bunch of different boards sticking out. That, you know, you wouldn't have a, a straight edge here. So the goal here is just going to be to get all those boards to the same length. Now, that first cut, you'll see I extended that cut all the way across. Now, on a wide countertop, this may be a little bit difficult to do, but you can do it. That long cut is going to help establish your kerf in a nice straight line. So that now, as we lower the saw to, to actually saw through the thickness of the board, that saw, that kerf is going to help guide the cut. Now what you'll notice here, this cut is not perfectly square. I've got a little gap up at the top of the square here. Um, and I'm okay with that. Because when I look at it, it doesn't look bad. This edge looks a little out to me, so I might address that. And I can see where my scribe line was that it is a little out. So that I might address. Now let's talk about finishing this up it's important that your blade be sharp. And when I say sharp, I mean super, super sharp. And you can't expect to take deep, heavy cuts on end grain. So it's important to get your, your saw cut as straight as you can first. And then it's just a matter of taking nice thin shavings on that end grain to clean it up. If you find that the plane is starting to dig a little bit, it's probably because you're trying to take too much off. So back out the iron a little bit and lighten that cut. I'm taking a little bit too light.
Now, if you want to get really crazy anal about this, and you're absolutely um, going to be anal about getting it perfectly straight, after you make your saw cut, what you can do if you're not happy with the cut, is to take your square and your knife, come back a 32nd of an inch from the edge, scribe another line very very thin line now you've got yourself a new line that you can plane to and when you plane to that line that edge should be perfectly square straight and smooth now i'm not going to finish this but if i were to want to continue this here to me is pretty darn smooth. It looks like I may have a little uh, chip in the blade. I might have gotten a nick in the uh, small nick in the iron, so I'm getting a couple little scratches there. The only way to avoid that is to resharpen your iron perfectly smooth. Make sure you have no nicks or chips in that iron. However, if you're still having problems, it's nothing that a little 180 grit on a sanding block won't solve in short order. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video and would like to see more videos like it, please take a minute to click that thumbs up icon, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. If you'd like to submit your own questions to be answered here in a future video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash brfinewoodworking for all the details. Our patrons help us to continue to create quality content like these videos and our bi-weekly audio podcast without subjecting you to annoying sponsorship ads. And as a Patreon supporter, you can submit your own questions to be answered in a future video right here on the channel. So thanks again for watching and until next time, stay sharp.